night, I was standing there looking at a monitor, and on one camera was Linda Hamilton, and on another camera was Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I thought, holy fuck, I'm making a Terminator movie. Ah, it was relevant back in the 80s and 90s when James Cameron created it, and now it's so relevant more than ever. Even back then, people were already starting to see automation, robotic, it, it's already going too far. It's fun to play the Terminator and to do all this action stuff. I love the franchise, and women power is mighty in this film. It was Sarah Connor in the 80s, and now we're three different and diverse women here. It's just very focused on the characters, and it's just a fast white knuckle ride through a techno hell that comes to our present day. Oh, shit. Never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. There's a certain type of story that is about a chosen one, someone who rises to greatness because they've been chosen by destiny. And then there are stories about heroes who rise because circumstances demand it. But Terminator's kind of somewhere in the middle. Danny, you are the future. You figure out pretty quickly what a super nerd I am. So it was really this nebulous thing of what would you do if you wanted to make a Terminator movie? It deals with the proximal threat of the human collision with a potential artificial superintelligence. And we've tried to recapture that feeling and not get too grandiose and too complex and have a lot of characters jumping backward and forward through time. Time travel movies are tricky, right? They can be a real mind fuck. So the central premise that we operate from is Judgment Day is inevitable. The rise of AI is inevitable. So even though Sarah took a stab at changing all that and fixing it, she really can't. And it, what she did was just kick the can down the road. In fact, the new future is worse. It carries on the, the true story that we started telling in 1984, that it is a very lovely, linear story that could have fractured off into so many different versions of the future, but still somehow, I think we're on a straight path of storytelling. I'll be back. <gasps> Tim's amazing and has such an in infectious excitement about this world and these women and the story that he wanted to tell, and he really drew me in. I don't envy Tim's position. He's worked very hard. I love his enthusiasm. I love his love and appreciation for graphic novels, comic books, his ability as a visual effects artist. I get his head in position, you film it, and then we project his face onto a piece of geometry that we're slamming into a piece of CG ground. <laughs> That is the world he comes from, to create this fantasy and to create this world. And we've seen that in Deadpool, and uh, you know we will see it also in this movie. He feels very comfortable with moving from directing a stunt to directing you in a very intimate scene. Tim has this fresh, new vision that is adding to the new vision of James Cameron and the franchise, and so I think it's a perfect match. Just want you to know that when Danny's safe and this is all over, I am going to kill you. I understand. The most important reason for Jim to come back to the franchise is because he knows the material like nobody else. Secondly, he's fucking Jim Cameron, so he's one of the smartest guys you'll ever meet. I'm a, a creative executive producer on the film. I worked with Tim Miller trying to give him the best bat to hit a home run off of. That's called the shooting script. The primary place he was involved was in the, in the writer's room. We did a, a little author's writer's room at first for just a couple of days, which was great. I brought in five of the top sci-fi fantasy authors that I'm a big book nerd, so getting to have those guys in there just to blue sky what this new film could be was great. And then we brought in the screenwriters. So we got a, we got a lot of opinions and, and thoughts. At the core of Terminator movies is Jim Cameron's complete belief that AI is coming and his complete suspicion that AI will wind up being a curse. But at the bottom of all of that is his belief that the human spirit 
will always triumph. I think the way Jim had created Skynet and the technology that came out of that was we knew a lot less about what kind of shape AI would take. Our dependence on technology is so much more than it was back when the original films were created. So it's not just that the future attacks us by using our weapons against us. It's that the future attacks us by using our complacency against us. One of the reveals of the film is, is that the future isn't ruled by Skynet. It's ruled by a different artificial intelligence. The AI that's pursuing Danny sort of arose from a similar set of circumstances, but is a different AI. James Cameron is such a visionary. He's always there with that thing we don't see, and five years later, we're like, oh, he was right. He's a visionary. Cameron does a lot of research before he writes his things, and uh, Tim Miller, before he writes, he does a lot of research. And so they're very smart about what the future holds and they study this stuff. There's a lot of good ideas and observations about the movie that come from that level of connection that Jim had. Jim is particularly good at those little details, those little things that make you feel the characters are real people going through extraordinary events. He's always there to say, this is thematically on point, this is not thematically on point, this is what these characters would do, this is not what these characters would do. And he, you know, as much as I think I have a handle on it as a fan, there's nothing like getting that from the source. My name is Sarah Connor. We changed the future, saved three billion lives. <laughs> You're welcome. I think for fans of the franchise, the biggest thing by far is that Linda's returning. Sarah Connor is in the story. She's returned to the story, which is, for me, being a huge fan of the franchise, that was it for me. I don't think any of us really imagined that we would want to create a Sarah Connor that wasn't played by Linda. And then the question became, does Linda want to come back? I felt very much that I had worked a very complete character arc in the first two films from a nobody to a warrior. I didn't want to just keep doing them without the ability to add something to the character arc. I actually wrote her a very logical email about uh, why it would be great for her to do this. My argument was people love this character. People love Sarah. They love your Sarah. Why do you care what happens to her? Because I was her. Sarah Connor just feels so important to the history of cinema and, and action, and obviously she's a woman and that's important, but she's also just a cool evolution of a human being. Sarah Connor, it's such an icon, and he was one of the first female superheroes that we had. It's really interesting to go back into our story, and Sarah has lived through events that are from a future that never happened, because she changed it at the end of Terminator 2. It was hard to figure out where Sarah Connor is now. Who is she now? Is she a complete lunatic alcoholic? I suggested that she be fat, because then I wouldn't have to work so hard, but that didn't work. Sarah reminds me of the seasoned sports player that's been on a championship team for years and years and is able to coach the youngsters. Linda comes to the set prepared every fucking day. She wants to do all of her stunts. I will always go as far as I can into a character, but there are limits at my age. Had to go to training camp in Texas for weapons and unlearn what I knew in 1991 because everything has changed. So that button, you gotta push kinda hard. Yep, if I can find it. When you see Linda Hamilton kicking ass and taking names, it's Linda Hamilton kicking ass and taking names. It's not a stunt double. Linda is a great, great addition to this film. And I think that Cameron and the other writers, they knew how to bring her back in a very organic way. When you see the film, when Sarah comes into the movie, you just feel this amazing sense of, OK, here we go. She's back. She's bad. Why not just let me have her? Because we're not machines, you metal motherfucker. One of my early contributions was to ask them to continue with Arnold. And I said, look, I'd love to be involved with this, but I can't be involved in a Terminator movie without working with my good friend of 35 years, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, everybody wants to see his story. Even though he comes in fairly late in the movie, his journey is something that I think the fans will find interesting, and it's got its own special arc. The Terminator movie was really the big breakthrough for my career. It was really the first movie where no one asked to show a bicep or an arm or with the pectoral muscles. He was all about right here, the face. Even though it's a new character, it is essentially the same character just at a different point in his evolution. We go further 
with his ability of adapting human behavior. He has been around more with human beings, and therefore now he has become more human. Do you believe in fate, Sarah? Or do you believe that we all can change the future every second by every choice that we make? You chose to change the future. You chose to destroy Skynet. You set me free. The journey he went on is a journey of self-discovery. It's not because somebody programmed him to be a good guy. In fact, it's the opposite. And what he chooses to be is a hero. We spent a lot of time making him probably the most interesting Terminator, T-800, that you've seen yet. And he does have a couple of pretty good funny lines, as only Arnold can do. Sir! This will be very hard to explain to Alicia. And it makes it very interesting, and from an acting point of view, they're much more challenging, because you have to find those moments, and you have to kind of rely on Tim Miller, who is the director, to dial me forward or back, you know, to say, well, this was a little bit too human. Let's do another take where you act human, but you're still clumsy and you're still machine-like the way you talk. Arnold's the king of action films. Arnold in person is impressive. But Arnold on camera is magic, and I can't explain why the best actors have this undeniable presence when they're on camera, and Arnold is just one of those guys. When Arnold finally got here, it was both mundane and so surreal. While I'd be like, damn, <laughs> that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I feel really lucky to be acting with him and just like seeing him looking at me, and I was like, I cannot believe this. This is not real, you know, like I've seen him so much and he's such a big star, like worldwide. And I cannot believe that yet. It's just like a dream, but it's real. I'm delighted to work again with Cameron, to work with Tim Miller, who I admire tremendously, and to work with Linda Hamilton and with all the new cast. I'm so happy to be with Arnold again. I kind of want to hug him all the time. I don't know what that's about. And the shared sense of history and the things that being back together with him bring to mind. You've been tracking me? If you want to keep your phone in a bag of potato chips, then keep your phone in a bag of potato chips. Second team in Jack's working. I like a good action film as much as anybody else, but if, if I don't care about the characters when shit starts blowing up, then I don't really care about the film. First and foremost, I really want to make you care about the characters, and I think we achieve that. All of them are compelling and interesting in their own right. Natalia is the face of the franchise moving forward. She's the new John Connor. She's kind of the audience. It's just the same reaction that any of us will have if we're working. Suddenly a Terminator appears and someone is trying to kill you. Come here. Let me show you around. In this day and age, when there's so much going on with immigration and closing borders, that just seemed like a really interesting thing for us to do, that the most important person in the world is this blue-collar girl, this nobody from Mexico City. Danny Ramos, she's a good person and a great human being, but she's not the one you would point to in a lineup and say, oh, yeah, leader of the future, leader of humanity, absolutely. How do we win? We win. We keeping you alive. She doesn't have that air in the same way that Sarah Connor didn't have that. Natalia is our hope for the future for this franchise, and she's got it like 150%. She's the most fluid actress I have ever worked with, and I mean ever. She's just got the most amazing instincts. I love Natalia and, and Linda so much, but it's a very delicate balance having three people in a group. It's a hard balance to strike, and it's been so sort of seamless and loving and wonderful. I think we've been able to be really weak around each other and really strong around each other, and it's just been such a wonderful thing to go through this with them. We are all, like, strong, independent women that we're, we're fighting, but I really like the fact that we're three women in the new Terminator. I'm not gonna live in fear the rest of my life, even if your plan means that might not be long. I want to stand and fight. So we choose our weapons and our ground. We're gonna set up a kill box. Kill box? And then we're gonna use me as bait. And then we kill that thing. Okay? Grace is the character that I think the audience will identify with, and she is the star of the action set pieces, and she's the character that dies at the end, so I have to make you care about her, so her death is meaningful. She is this sort of nobody who gets plucked out of an unimportant existence and is called upon to take the reins in her own life and to act bravely and selflessly. And I think we're all really invested in stories where people risk not just their lives, but their comfort, and they take the reins of fate. Talk. 
talk fast. You first. With Grace being this augmented super soldier from the future, it opened up a whole other world of opportunities for how these action scenes could be. Grace is built to fight Terminators, so super speed, stronger than normal, ability to take a lot of damage, enhanced senses, hearing, eyesight, things like that, but still with all that human heart and human drive. Is she good? Is she bad? She's definitely not entirely human. How human is she? She's a pretty interesting character. Mackenzie, she's a fantastic actor, and she's very emotional. She's got her career in indie films mostly, and she has a lot of humanity. You instantly like her, which is why I chose her, because I need the audience to identify. Mackenzie is supposed to be a super soldier from the future, so we had to put on a lot of muscle mass to make her look as badass as she does right now. You ever seen something like that? Or we did that? The training was important for the way that I carried myself. I think all of the aesthetics are really fun and it's what you point to, but more than anything, I wanted to carry myself the way a soldier or an athlete carried themselves, of which I am neither. I never carried myself that way. She has been eating five times a day, every three hours, just to make sure that she gets the protein. So we feed her muscles with proteins all the time. Mackenzie is going to get the attention for how she's transformed her body, and it's wonderful to see what she's done and the strength that she's discovered. It's been really intense, but it's been great. I think when you anticipate this, it's like a movie montage in your head, where I'm like uh, listening to Eye of the Tiger and pumping weights and then boxing, and everyone's like, wow, she's great. But instead it was like really humiliating and humbling most of the time, and people being like, I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> Take cover. I don't hear anything. Yeah, well, you're not an augmented super soldier from the future, are you? We spent a lot of time on our new nemesis from the future, but he's pretty damn spectacular. He's played by Gabriel Luna, and character name is Rev-9. It's just this evolved hybrid of the T-800 and the T-1000. Matte black alloy endoskeleton with a, a mercurious liquid exoskeleton that can operate remotely from the central CPU. It's fun, man. Well, here we are. Let's finish this scene. This new Terminator had to be more human than human, to steal a phrase from Blade Runner, because it could be. So if it's easy to talk his way through a situation, he'll do that. He can be very charming, he can be very persuasive, he can be very human. Sorry, metal hip. Two tours in Afghanistan. All right, thank you for your service. So I wanted someone who could be charming one moment and then the eyes go dead and he's a killer. And Gabriel Luna was that guy. Terminator 2 I saw when 10 years old, mother took me there. That was my childhood, and as a huge fan of Arnold's, and I'm still a bit at a loss for words. Give me the girl. No, you can't stop me. He couldn't tell me how he does it, but it's pretty interesting to see that the mask drop, or the mask go up, depending on how you look at it, because Gabe's a pretty nice guy. And he becomes this stone cold killer that you believe is there for one purpose, and one purpose alone is to kill this young woman, so it's cool. All Tim really wanted to know is like, are you fast? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that. But there's so much you can do if you really focus on the geometry of your body and, and the shapes you're making. And so that became really, really important to me was just to develop that physical vocabulary. They wanted me to sprint, you know, just full on, full tilt, come get this helicopter. But I thought maybe, you know, it's just an idea. What if I just power walk it? Gabriel is doing an incredible job playing Gabriel, the Rev-9. And just the way his physicality and his mannerisms have changed for Gabriel are really, really beautiful to watch. He's like a dancer. They're really great. So whenever I get a chance to fight him and perform against him, he's made himself so precise. It really does feel like you're fighting an advanced machine. And I am just a lowly super soldier. Knowing that you're going to face off with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger at some point really, really lights a fire under your tail just to make sure that once you come to that face-off, that you can stand there eye to eye and people in the audience will believe that you're a threat to the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. What makes this a direct sequel to T1 and T2 is as much about the tone as it is about the narrative. Every character is important 
for a different reason. And every character needs to be the most important character at different times. You want to cross the US border with an undocumented Mexican national and a woman who had her own episode on America's Most Wanted. You have a story that people understand and characters that they care about and then some blistering action all around that. The fact that Arnold's coming back again to play his character and Linda to finish the story of Sarah Connor is the best of all possible worlds. If it had just been a continuation of the Terminator movies, I wouldn't be here. It's the fact that we get to finish this story, the stories of these characters, is what makes it so unique. A Terminator has just killed your whole family. What do you do?